So hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is not my video coaching newsletter. I've got a bunch of my friends, I've got a member of my family here, and we're going to just kind of go stream of consciousness type stuff. We've got a bunch of topics we've been kind of talking about, and we're going to talk about self-reliance. It's kind of kind of going to be the topic <clears throat> for this particular video, and you know, we're obviously having a few drinks. And uh, so we're not responsible for anything that comes out of our mouth, obviously. But the goal is just have a good time and talk about current events and things that are important, self-reliance topics, that kind of thing. So first person I'm going to introduce you to is the director himself, and Andy Kunert. Andy was the – he was my vice president back in the day when I was in the real estate and the mortgage business – and he's still in the real estate mortgage business. He's got a um, property management company. He's still a realtor. You don't do any mortgages. And give it. A, go ahead. The go ahead T to me. Tell him about yourself. Good evening. Good afternoon, about. everybody on screen and in this <laughs> circle of trust. My name is Andy Kuna. I'm a real estate broker, and. Uh, own a property management firm and a hard money, hard, hard money lending it's a institution. Vodka talking. Yeah, it's I, I had about two drinks and the tongue gets pretty <laughs> loose and lazy <laughs> as things took a while to get up on the screen. But anyways, um, I've been in this industry for about 26, 27 years now. Uh, started uh, actually in Germany when I was 21 and got uh, hired or what do you call it? Um, what's the word in English I'm trying to find? Solicit, solicited? You got recruited. Recruited, excuse me, by a broker out of Orlando to run their office in, uh, in downtown Orlando. And from there on, it was... That was the vacation a, homes, right? No, that used to be downtown real estate, simply in Orlando downtown and College Park and Colonial Town. Uh, did not work out for long and moved into international sales and short-term rentals in Disney and from there on moved on to greater things in the mortgage market where actually we worked together starting in 1999. So fast forwarding 20 years further, I'm actively in the real estate business um, in a very hot market since or during COVID especially and uh, we are very um, involved in selling Managing, lending, uh, maintaining, giving advice, giving uh, proper education to all in international and domestic uh, buyers or investors per se. And uh, it's been a very uh, good year last year. It's already started as a much better year, the last 30, 35 days. And uh, we are thinking we're going to have probably the best year ever in the last 25 years. Cool. Awesome. And obviously, we're going to probably talk about some of the stories that ended up in 3% Man, as well as Mastering Yourself. And, um, you know, as we get rolling, obviously, we're just kind of, you know, shooting from the hip and seeing what happens and what comes out. And so I've got another friend of mine with me who I've known since I was like eight or nine years old. It's Bill Hart. He's got a business up in uh, it was Boca, right? Boca Raton, yep. Boca Raton. And, you know, we grew up together, shooting together. I mean, it's like every day, you know, we were running around the neighborhood on our bikes, BB guns, setting up targets, <laughs> you know, camping out, lighting big bonfires, digging pits, you know. Do big... whatever you want until the uh, street lights come on. Then to come home. <laughs> <laughs> And then when we camp out, then when our parents went to sleep, then we would go out and kind of roam around the neighborhood. And so, you know, Billy's into guns. He's obviously kind of, you know, politically leans the same way that I do. And um, so we're going we're gonna to talk about a lot of things, politics, family, getting over challenges, that, you know, all that kind of cool stuff. And, uh, and I have one other. And so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? And how we uh, met and... Yeah, so uh, anyway, yeah, we uh, lived in Florida my entire life. Um, uh, Corey moved into the neighborhood uh, very soon uh, after I even had my first memory. So he was, uh, yeah, we, him and like probably about 
10 or 12 other people when, back in the day when uh, you just leave your house and your, you know, go to school, come home, do your homework, go out on your bike and just be home by the time the street lights come on. And, uh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> that's about it. But it's, uh, yeah, it, uh, man, just a great time to grow up. Yeah, totally different time than uh, it is today. Um, yeah, riding your bikes, no helmets, no pads. Good times. Mm-hmm. So lived, lived here my entire life. Uh, yeah, uh, last 20 years I've uh, been um, a partner at, uh, uh, we're, uh, we own a Boca Box company in Boca Raton. Uh, we basically UPS store, but on steroids. But it's uh, the, uh, we specialize in packaging and shipping um, uh, fine art and sculptures, stuff uh, too big, too fragile, too crazy. I tell my clients that, uh, you know, my competition isn't handing out my cards, but there's usually one behind the desk. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so you come in with that crazy shit, come see us. But, um, yeah, ever since, uh, yeah, I've been, uh, definitely a, a two way, you know, supporter all my life, uh, really kind of got heavily into it. And, um, probably, probably as far back as 2006 or eight, similar in that range. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, but yeah, so anyway, yeah, I'm into guns, uh, uh, into American stuff. (laughs) America. (laughs) America. (laughs) Yeah. But anyway, so that's, that's me. So I've been here all my life. Um, yeah, uh, that's it. That's me. That's all you got. (laughs) That's all I got. And then we have, that's my (laughs) show. My aunt. Uh, Charlene is with us, but she's not on camera. She just wanted to do the audio. And uh, your, her mother, who she, well, how old is she? 89, was it? Yeah. Yes. She was 89 years old. And I remember she had this little chair type thing that she sat in, had a little seat, and you know, the thing with the handbrakes. And I was sitting on her, you know, or I was walking across the room, and, and your mother was sitting on the couch, and she had that thing next to her. And, and you walk by the TV or something. And her mother looks at me, and she's like, that's my show. <laughs> so it's my Aunt Charlene, and so obviously she's like a big Trump supporter, obviously. Yes. <laughs> she worked in a prison for 20 years, and so she has a lot of experience in the correctional institutions. And um, so obviously we'll, we'll get into some of those things when we get, you know, get a little into politics. But obviously... You know, she's got an interesting perspective, and, you know, what you'll see is once we get rolling is that all of us, we just kind of speak whatever comes out of our, our mouths and uh, whatever the consequences are, they are, because obviously we've been, you know, having a few beers, a few cocktails. So why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? Well, I retired, <laughs> and I'm enjoying it. And as far as prison life goes, things you like to forget and you just move on and be now you be happy now I'm happy I'm happy I'm happy living the life here in Florida I'm happy to have you as a nephew been married for 25 years now so you've been my nephew for 25 years great guy Corey's Corey's wonderful wonderful individual and the most caring man you'll ever meet She's obviously biased. <laughs> so you got to take that shit with a grain of salt. Uh, yes. So we're going to just kind of talk about all kinds of different subjects. Like today, the, the main theme is like self-reliance. So, I mean, obviously, you work in a prison. You got to learn to be pretty self-reliant because you got to learn to protect yourself because mm-hmm. you got, you're working with literally the worst kind of people on the planet. And so you can't let your guard down. And you know you got to pay attention. You, yeah, get, you, you learn you to think. notice things that most people don't notice. Would you say that's accurate? Yes and no. You know, it's not what people think. It's you know. What's it like to work in a prison for twenty years? Thank you. I was just about to ask. Oh. Put some detail behind yeah, like, oh. what's the, the prison guard what's story? the good bad and the ugly about working in a prison system for 20 years as a guard as a prison guard as a woman <sighs> you got a victim yeah. status yes you got a little I victim was, was your facility I, uh, women only or no all men okay oh. 
on that, about 1,300. Maximum security or low level? It was not low level. It was um, medium to maximum, depending upon... Murderers, rapists? Yes. Oh, okay. All of that. You just, they're just people. And that was in Florida or a different state? A different state. I'd rather not say. Different state. Uh, diff- we'd different rather not state. discuss it. So yeah, some, yeah. So, some people won't be on camera. Some people no, will be off camera. Some people will have their voices gurgled just for various reasons to protect the, the innocent. So, so as yeah. you're saying? Why is everybody interested in prison? Because Who wants well, to well, be well, there? It's, it's yeah, awful. It's, it's not something awful place. About. It's depressing. It's a depressing, depressing place to work. But you go in with an attitude, you say your little prayer, and, you know, you just want to come out in one piece. That's well, you stayed all. there you for do, 20 years, so. Yeah, I was, yeah. How do you survive it as a prison guard for 20 years in the prison system there's, with the most dangerous people in the world them. that there's have no problem of committing us. violence? There's tons of us, but it's different inside. You, you know, you, you treat people with respect, they treat you with respect. If they don't, do you, do you a, think there's any rehabilitative value in the prison system? That's a tough question. Uh, you know, if they want to do it and be rehabilitated, there's all kinds of programs for them. Right. Um, but most don't take and avail of those programs. And I don't think that there's enough. I mean, it's just my personal opinion. Um, of the programs that, that they have, you know, they'll have the AA and people who come in and all that kind of yeah. kind of thing. But, you know, it's different on the outside because once you get on the outside, they have to have a job. And I think it's, that's, what, that's the tough part for somebody who's been inside is to find that job. So that transition. And, it, that transition. You, you know, they have to check that box. And if it's between... You and somebody else who hasn't been, oh, they're not going to take someone who's been to jail. They're going to, take, they're going to take the other person who might not even be as qualified as the person who went to jail for something stupid. Yeah. You know? You know, everybody makes mistakes in life. You see that record, life. it's easy to swipe left or whatever, swipe right. Yeah. Everybody so, makes mistakes in life. So, you know, some people's mistakes are really bad. How do, how do you think the... Um, Exposure to the, I mean, there's obviously violence in the prison system. Uh, how, did, how did the, what was your first exposure to real violence in early in your career? Oh, do I really want to talk about what Yes. You, I, I think, yes. I think no. oh, she's God, not as yes. inclined to talk no. about it. We change the subject probably. No? Yeah, I Nine. don't. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't really like getting... All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll change, have, let's change it to what's your biggest life skill that you took away times. after leaving that, that career? What's your, what's, your most, what's your most valuable life skill that you took away after leaving that career? I guess more or less learning, I call it going into my CO mode. You have to be a different person on the inside as you are on the outside. You're flipping that impasse, switch. You have to flip the switch. Right. You know, because you're in there and you you have to be somebody else. On the uh, When you come out, I can remember my husband telling me once, you can't tell me what to do. I'm not one of your inmates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and that, and that switch went off and I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. He's right. You know, he's right. So there is, there is that, that switch that. My uncle would totally say that. Who would? I said my uncle that, would totally say oh, that. Yeah, That's a did. valuable skill yeah. though. Yeah, that, he did. But it's the, you know, there's the switch you have to. I say very, very small uh, percentage of the population uh, possesses that skill. Uh, that's, a, that's a really good skill, though. You have to be... I looked at it this way. For me, it was acting. Eight hours a day. I was an actress for eight hours a day. It was right. not me. You had to be somebody else to, in order to get through it. Mm-hmm. That's the way I feel. But off camera, if you really want to know some things... But I wouldn't really want to <laughs> tell yeah. the average person. Yeah. 
Well, Corey, back right. to you. Well, yeah. so anyways, on the topic, thank you. That was interesting. So w- one last thread, though. Do you think, because we were talking the other day about, because I'm seeing these videos, especially if you follow me on my Twitter, where one I saw today, it was like a, um, a car drove up, everybody was getting on the off-ramp, and they went and they smashed this back window of a Prius and stole something out of the back. And then, you know, took off and drove away. And, you know, the DA over there is just releasing people out and, you know, like the worst criminals. And they're going out and committing all kinds of crimes. And we're, I'm, I'm seeing these happen over and over, like a lot of them. Like really brazen daylight things are, like I saw another one where, you know, same thing. It was like a, uh, one of those, it was like a Chrysler 300. Pulls up, a couple guys get out. The, the guy gets shot in the arm and they steal whatever he's got and then drive away. And these are all turning out to be people that have been released back into society. And the reality is, if you can't get a job, you're just going to go back to doing what you're doing before. So is the correct... You've got 20 years. Is the corrections institution correcting any behavior? And if so, like, what percentage would you say are, like, really turning their lives around and the rest are like, you just need to lock them up. You can't help. Corey, that's beyond my pay grade. That was only Let's just take little. a guess. If you had to guess, you know, what would you put it at? How many really leave the prison system and they're redeemable. You see them come back. I, uh, it's, it's hard to say. People do come back and come back, but I really think it's, they can't get, it's being able to get a job and be able to support themselves and not falling into their old stealing habits that essentially they come back. But if they can get their life together... They have to get their life together. What what and percentage you know, do? I have no idea. Is it low? What percentage is. is I, it pretty I low? I just don't know. Is it high? Is it low? Is it medium? I don't know. If you had to guess, I really don't just know. Just take a guess. You you would see them because they would know. come back. So like, I I seen a few come back, but you know it's 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 a wide area. There's In other words, what of, percentage don't come back? I think a good percentage don't come back. So the majority of them are like, that I really a, sucked as a life experience. And they don't want to be back. Yeah. Well, you can't make it so they, oh, this is nice. You know, I get to go to the gym. I get to go to do this. I get to hmm. go do that. You don't want to make it too nice. But then again, you need, I think the key is education. Just so education. they can do something productive, right, on, a, on the outside. In other words, they do something that, because at the end of the day, you get compensated based on the value that you bring to the marketplace. And that's your, your reserve of knowledge, and it's your gifts, your skills, your talents. So if you don't want people to end up back in prison, you've gotta be, they've got to be able to walk away from that experience and better themselves and, and be able to earn money and see a way to where if they can continue to grow their reserve of knowledge and they develop their gifts or skills or talent, whatever it happens to be, whether it's selling real estate or running your mouth on YouTube or owning a packing and shipping company. That's basically the, or prison system. You get compensated based on the value that you bring to the marketplace. So people have to have a way to where they can increase their value proposition. They bring to society to society and you don't have to worry about them in and back up in the prison system right are, are the resources there in the prison system to help people is the intention there to make that happen the intention where I was was there they wanted to help people yeah they wanted the intentions them to intentions was there there was a there's a lot of programs for them to finish their education or there's AA or different things like that. But that's only if they want to utilize it. But then again, you know, in a dis- other prison that works in, some of them were never getting out. They're lifers. So that doesn't, doesn't hold water for them. And they should be there. 
Yes. They're, they don't belong oh, in society. Okay. Oh, yes. They don't belong getting released because no. they might get COVID or, no. you know, the prisons are overcrowded. They, so, they're monsters, in other words. If you let them out into society, they're going to do bad things. Is that a fair statement? It depends upon the individual person. But a good if, percentage if, of them are going to do bad things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stop He's being trying. a different man. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> There's no break. It's, it's, it's the it, individual it, person. You know, <laughs> but there are monsters in this world, and they oh, are real. Oh, there's definitely monsters in this world. Believe me, I know. I've been there. 